Hello and welcome. Today we are taking a closer look into Symfony Templating System. What was a template? Well, simply put, a template is a text file that will be used to generate HTML code. By default, Symfony supports Swig and PHP as templating engines, but we'll be focusing on Twig. Templates are located in the resources slash views folder of your bundle. Twig syntax is simple, yet very powerful. You have the say something statement, used to print a variable. The do something statement, it's used to call functions or control structures. We also support comments and filters. A filter will transform a value. We can achieve very powerful results by chaining filters. In this example, we are transforming the value of user.name into lowercase. Control structures in Twig. This is a typical look of an if statement. We are simply checking if the product array has elements. We do this by applying the length filter. So, if the length of the product array is greater than zero, do something. Otherwise, do something else. Loops. Here we are just looping through an array. The variable i will hold the array value, not the key. There is also a special variable you can use inside for loops. It is called loop. You can use loop.first or loop.last to find out if this is the first or the last interaction. Or loop.index to know how many interactions have happened so far. Let's see an example of a Twig template. Here we assume the controller is passing as a variable named products. This variable will contain an array of products. So on line 3 we are looping through all products. And we use the special construct else. This will be triggered if the product array is empty. It is very useful as it saves us from an extra check and also makes the code easier to read. Finally, on line 13, we close the for loop. Inside the loop, we print the product name and price and the order link if the product quantity is greater than zero. And here is the rendered HTML produced by our template. Now we have the basics of Twig covered. It's time to see other cool concepts, like blocks and inheritance. But what are blocks? A block is an easy way to share functionality. For example, a sidebar or the other can be a block. As you've seen on previous episodes, you can extend templates, much the same way you can extend a PHP class, and only overwrite what needs to change. To create a block, use the block and block construct. To extend a template, you must place the extend construct at the beginning of your file. A child template can only have blocks, so if you are using the extend construct, you cannot have instructions outside the block statement. So let's create a very basic template. We have a block named header that contains the default header. And a block named content. Child templates can override either block, but most of them will only override the content block, as there is no much reason for the other to change. So let's see how the view we created before can be changed to make use of the newly created template. So first, we start by extending the template. Then we override the content block. In this case, we simply put our existing code inside this block. This is the render HTML of our template. Not much has changed, but we can see that now we have the header. So we have seen templates and views, but how do we manage our assets? Symfony comes with a static. Aesthetic provides two simple Twig constructs, the JavaScript for JavaScript management and the style sheets for CSS management. They both work the same, just pass the files and Aesthetic will do the rest. So let's add the common styling files to the template. First, we create a block CSS. Child templates can overwrite it if they want to. Then we add the style sheet construct, pass in the CSS files to use and tell Aesthetic how the HTML markup should be. The asset underscore URL variable will contain the path to the asset file. This is the HTML file generated by Symfony. As you can see, even though you added two CSS files, there is always one entry. This is because Aesthetic merged the files together and created a, a random name for them. And this is how the rendered HTML looks like. The global styles are in place, but let's say you want to style the products list. So, let's add those styles to the, to the child template. First thing we did was overwrite the CSS block. Then we used a special construct called parent. This will tell Twig to execute and include the content from the parent block. Finally, 
we add our own CSS declarations, as we have seen before. And this is how the product list looks like now. Well, this was Twig in a nutshell. I hope you enjoyed this video and thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and give a thumbs up if you like this video. Thank you.